down here to catch him. Oh, oh him. Got him, got him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just calm down. That's all nerves, everybody. 2015 is when I first got serious into iguana hunting. I did it every day, and I wanted to learn more and more. I found this book on the internet, Key West Iguana Killers Club by Charles Mayer. Ordered it, read it, and learned so, so much from the author Chuck. Big inspiration into my iguana hunting career. And today, we are going to meet up with the legend himself. Chuck, he has his own iguana removal business down here in Key West called Defiant Pest Control. Who knows what's going to be in store on today's show of The Iguana Man. But back to this book. It had a plethora of information, great value, and it has a lot of personal experience from Chuck, who's been doing this a really, really long time. Guarantee you, if you get this book right here, it's going to be a good buy. You're going to read it, you're going to share it, and you're going to learn so, so much valuable information. What's up, guys? I'm over here in the Florida Keys. I'm, he's big. He's about, how tall are you, Chuck? 6'4". It's about 6'4". He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a hefty dude. Pretty decent sized fella. Guys, we're out here in the Florida Keys, and I'm with one of my good friends, Chuck. How's it going, Chuck? Going good, brother. And guys, Chuck does iguana removal here in the Florida Keys. Uh, Chuck, tell us a little bit about what's going on here in the Keys. I realize it's it's a different atmosphere and a different ecosystem than what I'm used to. What's going on out here, man? Well, it is uh, it is totally different from the mainland, if you will. Mm -hmm. We have two types of iguanas down here. We have resort lizards and we have road lizards. There's not a lot of land predominantly for them to go on, so they they congregate to where they can actually survive. Yeah. Where do they survive the best? Yeah. Resorts. Why? People feed them, there's a fresh water source, and everybody thinks, hey, this is a nice novelty. Right yeah. up to the point that somebody gets a toe bitten off because they look like a Cheeto. And I, when they say bitten off, it didn't really get bitten off, but it did get bit tin, so to speak. That's when it becomes a legal liability or a problem. Mm -hmm. Those are those are the people who call me and go, hey, can you solve this problem? Absolutely. Okay, so, he, so Chuck does iguana removal over here. And funny thing, guys, when I first started doing iguana removal, I was reading all sorts of books on the internet, this and that. And guess what, guys? I picked up a book called The Iguana Killers Club in Key West. Am, am I saying that right? You are. Iguana Killers Club in Key West, guys. And guess who the author of that book was? This guy right here, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> so I read the whole entire book. I was intrigued. Uh, it was very personal. It had recipes. It had strategies. And I didn't realize um, that this gentleman was the author of the book until one day I messaged him on Facebook. I'm like, wait a second. That name looks familiar. I grabbed the book, confirmed that it was, in fact, the same person after talking to him. And here we are today. So Again. Chuck, nice meeting you in person, dude. Um, so, guys, we're really, it's a whole different ecosystem. As you guys can see right over here, we have some mangrove snappers. It's, it's, there's no freshwater ponds over here. So we're just trying to kind of figure out and learn a little bit more about the iguanas out here. What are they doing? What do they eat? Where do they hide? When do they come out? There's a lot of unanswered questions. So in this video, hopefully we're gonna have some answers. So you guys stay tuned. With, uh, I started out with the Air Force Condor. Okay. And the Air Force Condor was, uh, it's a 3000 PSI, 1400 foot per second PCP big canister on the back mm -hmm. and as far as a gun that damn thing rocks like it owes you money it is very loud it's not good for doing covert removal gotcha. you know um for the more covert stuff i've kind of went old school and i got a gun called the hatson the hatson qe 44 or 44 qe at quiet energy that has a baffle on the working end of the barrel and it is probably one of the quietest air rifles that I've ever shot used in my in my is that, life. Is that a PCP or a break barrel? It's a PCP. Okay. So uh, as far as shot groups goes, you can probably get 40 to 60 rounds out of it before you have to recharge it again. Mm -hmm. But it, it works like it owes you money. The third rifle <laughs> that I use for long distance stuff is going to be the Brocock Bantam Sniper. Oh, Brokaw. And Brokaw. again, okay. 3,000 PSI, another 1,400 foot per second. When I'm hunting down here, I'm using anywhere from an 18 to a 24 grain pellet. And it's, uh, uh, I like using the hollow points. I've even got into using for the bigger iguanas, if I got a place with just big monsters on yeah. it, I use like the rat sniper slugs or a slug. And slugs. the hollow point slugs, and I'll show you in a minute, they have the ability to expand upon the impact. So it immediately puts the animal down wow like that super humane super quick that's really cool guys um 
Guys, the Keys is a very fragile ecosystem. It's actually one of the gems here in South Florida or in Florida or in the United States. There's no other place like this in the continental United States. These iguanas, what they're doing out here, why they're bad guys, they are digging holes, they are eating native plants, and they are reproducing like crazy, and there's no natural predators. So that's one of the reasons why people would be hiring Chuck to go out there and remove some of these iguanas. Also, if they are by pools, like Chuck said, they can be a liability to tourists. Some tourists see these iguanas, they think they're cute and cuddly, they wanna feed them. Guess what, you get bit, you get scratched. It's not gonna be good. Also, if they're by the pool, as you guys know, iguanas will love to swim in there, and they can also probably defecate and probably taint the pool, which would cause more money and damage and you know make it unusable for people. So these animals are definitely a problem out here in the Keys. And guys, the Keys is basically one road this way, one road that way. North and south, that's it. So we cannot have these lizards burrowing and making holes. Chuck, how long have you been taking out these iguanas for, man? Since 2009. Since 2009, guys. So he's been doing this for over a decade. So we're out here. We're going to try to get as much knowledge as possible. And then we might go on our very own iguana hunt once we realize when to go out and what to use and how to catch them. So stay tuned, guys. The pools to defecate. They use the pools like a toilet. Yeah. Anytime, anytime that you have anything that's hanging over a pool, iguana will go out to the edge and crap or piss in the pool. And it's it's one. It's it's both of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just I'm taking a piss or I'm yeah, they taking do. a shit. I'm peeing and pooping together. It's a big glob of snot that just comes down at one time which throws off the pool you have to shock the pool to get the ph right again mm -hmm. because they do it every day and you'll see on average a pool guy when he gets the ph ph wrong it's going to cost the end user it's going to cost the client another hundred dollars every time that he has to come out and do that Ooh, okay. so that's that's where you'll see that and the swimming isn't so bad it's the shitting in the pool that gets you because everything <laughs> likes to swim. But when they do that, it's just a natural reaction. They use this as a toilet, much same way we do. But it's just, you know, we've evolved. How do you think the iguanas became so popular on the on these islands out here in the Keys? Do you think of the Petra or do you think somehow they just found their way out here naturally? I think when I was I was writing the book, it, it has a lot to do with everything. You first started seeing them. You got accounts of people seeing iguanas back in the, in the Keys, I guess, 70s and 80s right yeah. that's that's when somebody go oh i used to see them down here well that was a guy with a pet as with most exotic animals everybody says oh they're cute they are cute when they're this long when they get to breeding age and maturity all of a sudden they they're not that cute anymore and when they start whipping the pet whipping the cat or you know yeah you go up and your little baby just got bit by an iguana well what do you do with it well i'm gonna let it go it's a natural environment that part was a big part of it the Hurricane Andrew series, where Hurricane Andrew came through Miami, wiped out a bunch of stuff. A lot of them escaped from the pet trade. It's the same thing as uh, the pythons in the Everglades. Yeah. People just go, okay, well, we're going to go forth and let you go and live in the, py in, the in the Everglades where you live. And they're thinking they're doing it a favor. Well, they're not. They're nice. jacking up the ecosystem. So the pythons, you, you have the invasive three down here. You have your, your pythons, you have your iguanas, and you have your lionfish. Mm -hmm. So that's the trifecta of the backyard safari. Mm. If you can go out and get a python, you can get a lionfish, and you can get an iguana, <laughs> yeah. you could check that thing off the bucket list. <laughs> I mean, when I first started this in like 2009, I got death threats from people. I'm going to hunt you. You are? Okay, that's great. I got banned from, uh, my site got blocked. I had one of the first iguana hunting sites on Facebook. Yeah. And I got banned like 36 times. Wow. I also had a, a spearfishing site, which is basically the same thing. It's a sport. We're hunting it. And why would we do that? Well, we're doing it to save the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. we're, we're making it more mainstream. I can hold up a grouper with a spear in its head, and I can hold up an iguana that I've just shot. And people will feel bad about the iguana because somebody used it for a pet. Yeah. In my book, I, I said, replace the word iguana with rat and just read everything else. If you feel the same, then we can have a conversation about it. Yeah. If you don't, then you'll understand. It's not your problem until they come to your backyard and it's your exactly. problem. Exactly, exactly. That's where, it, that's where it becomes exactly. an issue. None of those people that had a problem with it in 2009 have a problem with it today because it's become mainstream and it's their problem. Mm -hmm. My site was one that got banned early off into the thing. You go on Facebook, Google, Moogle, Snapchat, there's 50 different iguana hunting sites out there. Yep. And people are taking it more mainstream. They're taking it as a sport. I have people coming from Minnesota and Iowa going, hey, can we go hunt iguanas? 
get in the boat. And it's a lucrative business to actually do that. Oh yeah. Which oh, is yeah. which I find amusing as hell. <laughs> and I just did it to, you know, hunt yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So guys, as you guys hear, uh, in Chuck's book, there's a lot of really cool information. We're actually gonna show you guys the book here in a little bit, and we're gonna read some a couple interesting things from it. But um, I, it's a huge honor to be here, guys. I'm in the Keys, I'm with Chuck, man. He's the guy that wrote this book that I read that honestly inspired me and, and made me who I am today, guys, like to be honest with you. Some of the stuff I read in there, some of the, you know, the a lot of the stuff I read in there, guys, inspired me, pushed me forward, when I started hunting iguanas, I was getting a lot of bad looks, but it was very refreshing and it felt good, guys, to know that there was somebody out there that took it just as serious as me. So serious enough, he made a book, guys. And like I said, I read the whole book and it's just, like I said, it's just a huge honor to be here and meet you right here in the flesh. So guys, we are gonna actually go check out the book in a little bit. And um, yeah, we're gonna be iguana hunting here in a few. So stay tuned. All right, guys, and, and here's the cool thing with this whole entire deal, all right? Not only are we gonna be removing some of these invasive iguanas, but they are actually considered a delicacy, guys. Actually, Chuck, what are what are some of your favorite recipes you like to do with some iguanas? There are just there's just so many of them. When people when you say that you, you say uh, are you eating an iguana, you have to take it out of out of context because everybody in South America eats iguanas. Mm -hmm. So anything you can do with chicken, you can do with an iguana. Yeah. It's it is an animal that eats plants, so it doesn't have a gamey taste. If you've ever eaten anything like frog legs, that's what it is. If you've eaten chicken wings, that's what it is. So any spice that you put on it. The meat takes the, the, the taste of whatever that spice is, whether it's curry or whether it's uh, moho or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Teriyaki braised iguana, and that is tail meat. So what they do is they cut the strips of the tail meat out. Mm -hmm. You put it on a hot top. You put sweet teriyaki on it, and you braise it until it's nice and brown, and then you just finger food it right up. Uh, chicken wings, iguana chicken wings. Mm -hmm. You roll them in panko. You roll them in a little egg wash put them in a deep fryer, bring them out, put some ranch on it, presto changeo, there it is. Nice. The last place that, uh, that did this for me was a place called Jose's 2. It's a, it's a restaurant south of the border and you don't have to bring your passport. They make real live Nicaraguan food. Nicaraguans eat iguanas. He broke it down in five different ways. Iguana frito, fried iguana. Iguana panol, which is like a masa soup. So they took the tail meat and they made it into a, a, a cornmeal type soup with a mint base on it. They did iguana stew, which is your clear. Iguana soup, which is the red based. Yeah. And then we had barbecued and baked iguana. Oh, and he goodness. put the whole thing out in a, in a display. And you had beans, rice, guacamole, salsa. You didn't know what you're eating. You didn't know what you're eating. We had a group of people from... Ohio that came down and they're like, oh yeah, this is the best damn thing ever. Oh, what yeah. is it? Iguana. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's insane how tasty these invasive green iguanas are. Like I said, Chuck's been doing this for a while. Chuck, are you st are you openly still doing removal if anybody needed it on yeah. the island? Yeah. What would be the best way to contact you if anybody needed some? Because we were driving around and we heard lots of people like, hey, we got iguanas here, we got iguanas here. We told them we were just visiting, but we had a friend that might be able to help. What would be the best way for them to contact you? Defiant Pest Control. It's on Facebook. Uh, you have you can call me at 305-797-3992, and that's Defiant Pest Control. Okay. And that's how you call me. Call me. You call Wheel Hall, 880 Blind Cripple or Crazy. <laughs> you guys heard it right there for yourself from the man himself. Chuck, guys, if you guys need some iguana removal and you're in the Keys, give my man a call. We're going to put all his information in the description down below. Uh, if you guys, like I said, if you guys want somebody that has experience, that knows about these things, and we'll get them and not let them go to waste and throw them away. He's the man to call. We'll put that in the description. Let's go. Oh, those grow wild out here. Are they? Uh, yeah, they're wild here too. Wow. Well, to get him. Yeah. That's just awesome, guys. Check it out. Check it out. Chug actually even uh, rode it towards me, y'all. Two rods. Keep on killing and grilling. And there, there, there goes the secret tour right there, guys. So. We're gonna put the link to this book in the description down below. And also we're gonna read some of the most compelling parts of this book on camera for you guys. So you guys can see some of the content of this book. But like I said, guys, look, tools of the trade. Remember the four rules of gun safety. The, the book talks a little bit, bit about everything. Real quick, let's go to the table of contents right quick. Okay, table of contents. Um, iguanas, what's the problem? Let's see, tools of the trade, gun safety, shot placement, no carcasses, no credit. Thank you, and that's what we be doing, and that's part of my business model too, dude. We don't count it as a kill unless we have the carcass. 
Um, let's see. Uh, head bobbing, tongue flinging, posturing, squirming. It shows different iguana behaviors right here, guys. Charging, tail whipping, the bite, the total package. Recipes, it has a couple of recipes and it has drinks that you can make out of the iguanas, y'all. So there's a couple different cool things that you can do with this book right here. We're gonna put the link, we're gonna go home and read it. And like I said, we might read some more stuff. So when stay I first tuned got into iguana hunting, I bought this book, guys. It is the Key West Iguana Killers Club. I had no idea what it was. I've only book out there like it that, that tells you in depth about iguana hunting, guys. It's not even my book, this is my buddy's book. But I wanted to share it with you guys because it's helped me on my journey. It's actually inspired me, guys, to be where I'm at today. So much valuable information in here, where to hit the iguanas, where to find them, what's the problem. It's even got some recipes in the back, guys. Trinidad style iguana curry stew. Oh my goodness. We got to look, look at how he's like, it's good. It's good. We're going to try, try some of these recipes on here, guys. But I'm going to put the link to this book in the description down below. It's not a lot, guys. Go out there, get you a copy of it, and uh, definitely educate yourself. It's got a plethora of knowledge. Look, there goes my buddy Chuck right there. And, uh, you know, I promise you, I promise you, it's definitely worth picking up. Real quick, though, we are going to take a couple target shots with some of the guns right over here. What type of guns are these, Chuck? The first one that you got set up is going to be the Air Force Condor. This is uh, one of the first working guns that I used. It is a single shot, 3,000 PSI, 1,400 feet per second. Nothing but fun Air Force Condor gun. This is like the cream of the crop. Uh, back in 2009, this is the first gun that I actually started out with doing professional iguana removal. Nice. I have come up to something a, a little bit different on this one, the Hatson AT4410QE, Quiet Energy. When we, when we rock this one off, you'll definitely hear it. It sounds like a 22 Magnum going off. When you hear this one, it's going to be hard to hear, but it hits just the same. The advantages of the Hatson over the Condor, and I love them both the same, uh, but this one is just going to be a better gun for up close backyard removal. I have a 10 round magazine. Ooh, nice. So it's a semi automatic. I can rock the lever back 10 times and it'll put rounds down range. It has a lot of distance that goes with it. We're probably running 15 or 20 yards on this one and you're going to hear the uh, you're going to hear the the pans make a nice little noise at the end of it. I use open sights with this gun. It has a nice big front orange orange dot on the front of the site so my proper placement of my site picture on the background of a nice green iguana i know exactly where i'm going to hit it when i'm going to hit it it gives me the ability to occupy that site picture really quickly where if i'm looking for something through a scope say up close seven to ten yards yeah it takes me a little longer to acquire the site so this one by far for what i've been doing in the last couple of years very close in close type hunting is the is the is the cat's so the, the open the open site uh, for more close range the the, the scope for like longer distance Absolutely. shots and yeah. you can see the iguanas you know 10 20 feet away from you you can just acquire them real quick you know where it's hitting boom bam boom in the back especially especially in the keys we have a lot of places that have very high profile properties they got a lot of expensive toys and their houses are very expensive so i don't want to be dusting up any of their woodwork or windows yep. uh my shot placement is is key most of the time, I'm doing, doing vertical shots, something that's up in a tree, or vertical shots, something that's down on the back of a seawall or something. So there I have, a good, I have a good backdrop. I don't have any issues with the ground going somewhere where it's not supposed to go. If it falls from the earth, it's not going to do any damage to anything. But that's, uh, that's what I use when I go out on professional removal jobs. Awesome, awesome. So before I guess we go on this hunt, I guess we're gonna make sure these guns are uh, tuned in, right? Yep. Dialed in? And dialing in, dialed in, aired up, and ready to rock and roll. All right. So awesome. we'll show you the condor first. We're probably about 20 yards, so I leave it. I'll Very leave important it. to calibrate your scope, right? Absolutely. Have to, have to, have to. So the way this goes, it's kind of set up, and it does it does most of the work with you. This is going to be one of those UTG bug buster scopes. Three by nine by 32. So this is probably the loudest air gun that I own. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And it's a hard hitting son of a gun. Yeah, Woo! that sounded loud, dude. That was that sounded like it smacked the pan. I see you actually made another dent on it right oh, there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Are you okay over there? <laughs> 
Dude. Dead iguana. That would be a dead iguana right there. Some lead. That would be a dead iguana, 100%. If you want a little different noise, you just move it across to the other side here. He's got another pan right over there. Pretend that pan's an iguana. Oh my goodness. Woo Hello. Oh, yeah. Awesome target range right here. <laughs> Look at this. That's impressive. That gun definitely got some kick to it, y'all. Which, which, which you need for these iguanas, some of these big iguanas. Oh, it'll, it'll, it'll put it, it put in the work. It put in the work. It puts in some work. So with the AT-44, 22 caliber again, um, PCP. So we're running, we're still running in the green zone on our, on our uh, air reserve. This is going to be the air reserve, 3,000 PSI. I can fill it, fill it all the way up. We're still running in there. I rack it back. It rotates the cylinder, allows my round to be slapped into the chamber and you're going to hear it it's a lot less noisy this is for those covert shots uh you know if i'm doing something that's low profile this would be the gun that i that i would use because nobody can hear it oh wow yeah did you hear that seems like exactly. the same amount of force though on the pan it is. yeah it's Super just quiet. and it's just moderated Super quiet. So would you say that this is something that, uh, I'll let you shoot, sorry. Nice. Would you say this is something like maybe uh, somebody would want to get for a beginner gun for hunting iguanas? I would say it would be, absolutely. Uh, it's a mid-range gun. And when I say mid-range, about 450 bucks. Um, is that what it was, D? Yes. Yeah, about 450 bucks. This is her gun. I stole it from her. <laughs> once, I, once I started using the damn thing, I just never gave it back because of the attributes that it has because i have a good shot count because i don't have to break the barrel mm -hmm. and go back and forth break barrels are a great starter gun your your uh uh crawls your hatsons your Gamo. gamos all of those are really good the problem with it is eventually you're going to get a sight problem because you're breaking the front of the barrel down mm -hmm. back and forth and if you have a sight that's mounted onto the stable part of the gun and you're breaking the barrel, the barrel's where the actual round goes and flies from, so it's going to be off. It doesn't matter how good it is. For something 7 to 10 yards, that doesn't really matter. Past, but past that 7 yard or that 21 foot range, you really need to dial it in because your shot placement is the size of a dime. So that's, that's what you do when you're using air rifles for hunting iguanas. The goal is not to injure them. The, the goal is to humanely euthanize them mm -hmm. in the quickest way possible. So that's the whole goal of hunting, actually. I'm not out there to hurt their feelings. I'm out there to make them go away. And as like Guadamay would say, put them in the bag. <laughs> yeah, buddy. You want to awesome. rack off a round of these? Sure. sure. So you still got a couple of rounds in there? There's you want me to here let me let me is this is this for a loader or when you rack the the handle back it will okay be. all right y'all so check it out we're going to be trying out this open side hat hatson right here let's go ahead and rack around in now the safety is right by your thumb so you put the, this right here push, push that when you push that in that means the safety is off okay safety is off guys now that trigger is about a three pound trigger just so you know Nice. nice. <laughs> I've never been on this side of the gun when it's shot. It's quite a shit. <laughs> nice. Dude, that is cool, man. Look how the, the trigger just goes with like no effort, y'all. So it, can, it allows you to be right on the target and then just hit it, y'all. Nice. I'm going to have to probably get me one of these, too. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be hunting iguanas where the seals were trained to pick up torpedoes, dude. Exactly. Potentially these iguanas out here, the invasion... Uh, Maybe they, maybe they were here back in the day and they learned a thing or two from the seals, guys. These animals <laughs> apparently are coexisting with each other. And who knows, guys? They're smarter than you think. So we got to be on our P's and Q's, guys. These goannas can be anywhere, okay? Just like Chuck said, it's about 100 degree weather out here. But don't be fooled, guys. They're here. The iguanas know we're here, too. They're probably looking for us. So let's keep her on. right here. Holy crap. You see one? Yes. Like, she's super blend in in the bush right here. Little, oh, I see it. Yeah. Good thing you brought the ninja. Oh, yeah. Good job, ninja. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's got lizard vision. There's four of them here this morning. That she's he a does. Fatty. Whoa. Oh, yeah. I see the head right yeah. there. You can barely yep. see her. Yeah. As you can see, y'all, iguana ninja. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Zoom in on him, dude. I yeah, can't see him. <laughs> just get out the car. Oh, look, 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 come right here. Look, come here, come here. Just zoom in on him. Right here. Right there. I can still see the head right there. Is he a little dead? Yeah, I got it. You see it? Yeah, nice eye. Hey. Thank you. Ninja. Yo. Ninja. Yes, sir. Back up so we can shoot over. First go in. Our first go in. There he is right there. Get out. <laughs> She's here. Oh. I oh, see her. She's, she's done. She's, yeah, she's done. done. Right out here. Let's go get her in the bag. Right out here. Got her. In the bag. Got her. When it's clean is when he hits them and they drop to the ground right there. We'll take it though, y'all. We'll take it. What is that? A curly tail right there? Yeah. We can't be perfect on every shot, y'all. That's just what you know, that's what's hunting is. Again, you guys gotta understand how strong these animals actually are. They haven't been surviving out here for nothing, guys. They're really, really strong. They can adapt. And sometimes they have a second win, guys. Obviously, like this guy. She's basically dead on impact, but she still had adrenaline and hormones pumping through her body. That's why she ran. But as you guys can see, she was toast right over there. We got her in the back. We're about to put her in the cooler. There she is right there, y'all. Humanely euthanized. Ooh. So Chuck, uh, the size of this lizard, you would say this is a medium. A medium one right here? Yeah, that's a, that's a medium. And it is a medium male. So you have these, these little things right here. Oh yeah. That's their little musk glands. So when you have when you have the male iguana that comes out, this is how it leaves its scent and leaves its marking, marking for the females and where it is. My first shot went through the bottom part of uh, the bottom part of the neck and did kill the animal. Yep. As you can tell, the animal's dead at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, those uh, those little glands on the bottom of it yeah. is what differentiates the males from the females. Yeah. We were curious because we know that there's a certain type of like monitor lizard that. Um, can change from male to female. Do you think that potentially these iguanas, when they're younger, they can choose, or potentially something to you know? In, a, in some reptiles, that is an actual truth, uh, and it depends on how many males are in the territories. Like like some fish, the biggest the biggest fish in the ras category will take on the male role and become the major male in the category i don't believe that is that for lizards lizards are lizards are chosen by the temperature that the nest was in whether they come out as biological males or females and iguanas don't have the ability to morph into a female got you got you got Dallas, you. that's that is totally correct iguanas don't morph into males they're they're, they're, they're sect at birth but in one to two degrees of the incubation in the nest the, the temperature of the nest but what i heard though is some of the females can can store male biological uh stuff in them to probably have eggs if they don't breed that's what that's a that's a theory Fertilize that I heard. their own now, eggs i know that they can definitely store sperm and and use it in the future ah. even some of my tokays and my madagascar day geckos i'll remove them from the male and they'll still lay months later ah. fertile eggs but i don't know if they could could store sperm like to impregnate another female or incu you know gotcha. to fertilize or, or another change bat. the sex change well, guys, i mean if you guys have any uh input on this phenomenon definitely drop Absolutely. some comments let us know because obviously Cause there's I'm a lot of stuff there's a lot of stuff unknown about these creatures we just know that they're taking over this island right here and it's our job to put them in the bag first iguana in the bag his butt is right here <laughs> I'm down here to catch him. Oh, oh, oh. Got him. Got him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just calm down. That's all nerves, everybody. That's all nerves. Oh my goodness. Look at the shot placement right there, guys. Cranial exit right there, guys. I don't even know if, if that makes any sense, but check it out, guys. Lethal, humane shot. Man, look at Put that. him in the bag, guys. Is that ketchup? So check it out, guys. The hey. sweet spot you want to do, and this is what I learned in Chuck's book is right behind the eye, right in front of the shoulder. I just... Right in this area, right, Chuck? That's it. 
90 degrees behind the eye, 90 degrees up in the ear, or your next shot is going to be on this lateral line right there. What it does is it breaks the neck and kills the Ebola instantly. Instantly, guys. Yeah, because we're not out here to hurt these animals. We love, we love lizards. We just need to control the population mm -hmm. and do it as humanely as possible. Exactly, guys. Look at that shot placement right there, guys. Instant cranial damage right there. One hit kill in the bag. Guys, truck from Defiant Pest Control, guys, putting the smack down on these invasive iguanas here in Key West, y'all. Like I said, if you guys need iguana removal, Chuck is the man to call. We are going to put all his information in the description down below. Like I said, if you guys have a problem with these lizards taking over your yard, definitely don't hesitate. Look, he's on another one, guys. That was a chest shot. He's bleeding. He's on another one. Oh, he's dead. He's stuck in the tree. He's Let's see if I can get another shot and get him out. Oh, here it comes. Oh. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Dang, look how bright that one is right there. I put him on the deck. Oh. He's still got a little beauty in him. He's just had a body shot. Just like that, y'all. That's all she wrote. Will his mata back. In the bag. Guys, like, where I'm from in Broward, we see a lot of iguanas and we see a lot of different colors that they have. But I'm not gonna lie, guys, here in the Keys, y'all, they have some very vibrant green colorations out here, y'all. And we kind of figured out why. It's because the ecosystem that they're living in, it's got... <laughs> It's, 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 it's bright green, guys. They're living in mangroves. They're living in saltwater plants. These are different plants than what we're used to seeing. We're not used to seeing and hunting iguanas out the mangroves, guys. But apparently, this, this is the ecosystem that we're in. That boy Chuck does not play with the air rifle, y'all. It's a bad day to be an iguana out here. Ain't that right, Chuck? That's right. Killing, chilling, grilling. Oh, yeah. It's the J-O-B. It ain't got another J-O-B. Let's see what kind of rounds you're using right quick. I'm using the Hatson H&N uh, Hunter Extremes. We'll just take them, take that front side off. Barracuda Hunter Extremes. Nice, 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 nice. And so, one more time, what, what kind of gun is it again? This is the uh, Hatson AT4410 QE. AT4410 QE. It is probably the quietest gun I got, cost, cost point. Somewhere about the four or five hundred dollar range, worth every damn dime that you spend on it. As a mid-range gun, this thing is a tack driver. I mean, I'm just using open sights on on this, but you have to see the profile that I'm shooting. Also, my close-range shooting, my longest shot in this general area is going to probably be 21 feet or seven yards. Mm -hmm. So, at that, and I'm shooting against somebody else's property. My goal is to hit the iguana. I'm not doing. 100 yard shots because that's somebody else's stuff so we're either shooting a vertical shot straight up or a vertical shot down or something with a good backdrop on it that we know the round's not going to uh the round's not going to go anywhere and this this little beast puts the lead to the target in rapid fire succession and it's just fun for the whole family to shoot absolutely man i'm just i'm just over here it's very quiet and it's like i said dude we spotted three we killed three dude perfect 100 percent success rate out here guys on this job and and chuck guys he's he's putting it to these iguanas like i said it's a bad day to be an iguana right now y'all because we're putting them in the back massive iguana massive goanna is spotted again guys this might be the alpha massive right there oh ninja how did you see that dude Take steps back, I take steps forward, I look left, right, up, down, all around, man. You just Ninja, gotta look you're on. You... I know, but it could be going to be the direction. Right here. Oh, got it. Got a headshot. Put him in the back, Chuck. Let's see, so I got something that's gonna look like a top shoulder. There he goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's right there. He's not, he ain't safe nowhere. There he is, right there, y'all. In the bag, y'all. Just 
like that, y'all, lights out. Humanely euthanized iguana in the bag. Very nice, very nice. Look at the shot placement right there, guys. One hit, critical hit, immobilizes him instantly. He fell out the tree, gave him the final blow. Like I said, guys, these little Godzillas are a little bit stronger than you think, okay? They're not mammals where you hit them and they bleed out, guys. They have a lot of extra juice to them. Huge shout out to Chuck for teaching them a super fat lesson. Huge shout out to Ninja. Huge shout out to, huge shout out to the team, hey, guys. We got a whole team out here. Eye, dude. Let's get it. Oh my Let's goodness. Get it. Guys, Chuck, defiant, uh, Chuck at Defiant Pest Control, y'all. Like I said, guys, getting the job done. You've been hunting iguanas for at least 10 years, right? Over 10 Easy. years? Since 2009 is uh, when I started professionally removing reptiles and non-invasive or non-indigenous invasive species from the Florida Keys. Mostly in my area is down here in Key West. Um, we do high profile properties, we do rental properties, we do resorts, yeah. everything that needs to go with that. And, and anybody who wants to learn, I teach them how to use air rifles in a safe manner to remove iguanas from their personal private property. Absolutely, so absolutely. It's, uh, it's removing them from the ecosystem and helping the environment. Absolutely. And and they're not bad table fare as well from what we've been hearing from all, all, the, lo <laughs> from all the locals. Because you guys want to hear something cool. Chuck actually has a really good story on how he started doing iguana removal. And the only way you're going to know that story and the journey of where he's came from and where he's at now is by getting his book. Okay. So we're going to get more to the book in a little bit. And I'll show you guys a link where you can buy the book. And it's got a plethora of knowledge, a plethora, guys. You'll learn so much. Make sure you check it out, but stay tuned for an update because right now we are looking for that alpha. We know he's in here somewhere. He's just probably really, really smart. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be back with an update. This is epic. I'm glad this is not like super wide. So they're just like bunched up. So it's, it's a little bit more easier, but it's not easy, but it's just a little bit more easier. So you don't have to stretch your eyes all over. You just stretch your, like either to the tippity top of the bush or like somewhere in the middle where it's like nice and creviced so they can just till. Not uh, like, bro's on skirt. I see one right there. All right guys, we just harvested all these iguanas. We're about to clean them up real quick and we're about to have some lunch. Stay tuned for an update. Uh, we're just gonna clean these guys up. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna be eating real good right here, y'all. So stay tuned. 